Hey y'all, it's your girl Tessiki, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. You can catch me in your city talking cash. Uh -huh. cash. Popping bottles with some model Siki mask. All right, we got Tessiki jumping off the porch with us today. Mm -hmm. You already know. What's going on with your stuff? Nothing much. You looking Jim. like it for sure. Yes, you know, I got to do the most. <laughs> As always. For sure. It's a pleasure to have you on the porch with us today, man. Well, thank you for having me. No I love problem. Atlanta. No problem. It's always love here. For sure. It's just really, you know, I'm excited to be here. You know, yeah. I've been wanting to be on the porch. No, we got you. We already know what's going to make it happen. I'm here, bitch. <laughs> that fur talking about something for sure. Mm -hmm. Got to head. Go ahead and let them know. See, let people see that fur real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me get it to it. I got this from Yo City. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. So how does it feel going to different cities just doing new shit now? You know what I'm saying? Your life done changed over the years. I know it feel good. Um, it feel good. It, I mean, it just feels like it's supposed to be happening. It, but it's also like I mean, a relief. Like, it just feels like a relief. And it's just my obsession now. Like, it's always been my obsession. Be busy. That's my biggest obsession, staying busy. Like, I think I have, like, yeah. ADHD because I love to keep moving like <laughs> seriously but yeah it's it's a blessing nah for sure what's the best city you feel like you've been to so far um the best thing the best city but Be oh best city best city you've been to so far mm. I don't know it's just they because every they just keep getting better but Denver <laughs> Colorado is just really they put a little stamp in my heart. It was so many what people. What does I talking about up there? Um, <laughs> they need my help. <laughs> <laughs> they need my help growing. I don't know. That's all they talk. They ain't got no weed up there. They do. They do have it. They looked out. Don't get me wrong. They they looked out, but it just it's missing something. It's yeah. missing that. Uh. How the weed in Baltimore hit? It's good. We all should come from Cali. <laughs> so it's good. You know, it's good. Real but spill. I think Denver is like they so you know that's where they planted that shit. Mm -hmm. But they need to go get some some roots from um, L.A. They need to do some better shit out there. They got they need a Tsekki pet. Mm -hmm. Real spill. They just missing that little punch. That's it. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe coming up in West Baltimore? Um, lit. It was lit. It was hard, but. It's always some good shit going on, you know what I mean? Take your mind off the bad shit. It was good. I mean, it was cool. Real sweet. I mean, I now, like, where I'm at in life, I'm the type of person that's like, even if it was bad, and we all could look at it and be like, and I can say and tell you, like, you know what I'm saying? Have you crying? But, like, when you get to a certain part in your life, it's just like, dang, I'm not even upset or have anything to complain about what I thought was bad because that all got me here. And that all, you know, taught me a lot. You feel me? So... You know what I mean? It was hard, but I, I'm glad it was hard because I wouldn't be who I am today. Real shit. Oftentimes we get to hear the male perspective of growing up in Baltimore. So as a woman, how would you describe coming up in the city of West Baltimore? And what makes the West Side different from every other side of Baltimore? Um, cause I'm pretty, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of pretty girls over West. You already you know. know. It, man, it's a lot of pretty girls in Baltimore, period. But um, it's like, um, it was kind of rough, you know what I mean? Because when you're pretty, mind you, we all living in the same place, so I don't know, understand why it's an attack. But, you know, it's like, it's more like envy, I say that, more jealousy and all that type of shit going on in the city. Because when I moved in the county, my mom moved us in the county, it was different. It was like I fit in. It was a bunch of pretty girls. We just, you know, all was just who got the prettiest outfit on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Type shit. Not, you know what I mean? It's not. I don't know. It's like, it was kind of hard. It wasn't as competitive once you moved. Yeah, it's not competitive. In Baltimore, it's like, it's competitive. Yeah. Especially, you know, West Baltimore. <laughs> no, for real. How would you describe your childhood coming up? Um, it was, it was cool. It was rough. Um, I'm number eight out of 12. We all shared, 10 of us shared a room before. We lived in a one bedroom apartment before. Um, uh, my dad and my mom, they did a long bed, so I got a big, like, gap. Like, I'm very, like, 
independent, you know what I mean? I'm so, and that comes from my childhood. And another thing, I'm independent, but I'm also clingy because I'm, I'm scared of, uh, I guess, what? All separation anxiety. Separation anxiety, that's what it is. That's what I have, like. And I noticed that I have that because of the lack of attention that I had as a child from my parents. Or not even a, the lack of attention. It's like that big gap from them, and then my grandma have to focus on ten children. Right. You know what I mean? It was just yeah, it was. It was a lot. Yeah, I can so understand. I always want my partner with me all the time. No, I feel that. Mm -hmm. So, being number eight out of twelve, what would you say your role for your siblings was? Um, my role was it was kind of hard because I'm like in the middle. Number eight out of twelve is like trying to fit around the table and um yeah it was cool but it was hard i had to fight a lot i had to fight a lot of my siblings growing up <laughs> i had to fight them a lot it needs to be a, like a roar like when it when it came to me fighting them everybody's in a circle around us like get her get her so, yeah i was that one that everybody just they wanted to win you know it's like everybody wanted to challenge me i don't know it's still like that to this day we see yes it is <laughs> no nah, for real so how would you say, how much of an impact away from your parents once they did their bids had on you? Um, it had a lot on me. I made sure we was together. Like, I'm the sibling. Yes, I'm number eight, but I'm the one that, when we got taken by foster care, I'm the one that told people, hey, these are my siblings. And then they put us all together, and they called my grandma, and she went through the process of being a you know, foster you know, mother to get us, and we went with her in Virginia Beach. That's real. And I was like... Um, what, four, three or four, yeah, three and a half. So growing up, when would you say life started to get a little better for you? Oh, life started, it's crazy because I had my children so young and I don't recommend people to do this, but life got better to me when I had children. It was like, um, I don't know, just, I don't know, just blessings, so many blessings came in and my children was my biggest blessing. They just gave me a whole different focus, a whole different purpose. Because when I didn't have children, like, I tried to commit suicide before because of something I went through when I was 13. But, like, now I'm like, what the hell? Why would I do that? But when I, I had my children at 17, 18, and, yeah, that's, that's when life started getting better for me. That's real. How old were you when you had your first child? 17. That's real. I got pregnant at 16, but I had them at 17. Then I got pregnant with my daughter at 17 and had her at 18. So now that's what probably helps with that separation. You had your babies. Yeah. So they was like fulfillment in your heart. And they my best friends. Oh, that's what's up. Mm -hmm. How much does motherhood mean to you now? It means the world. That's why I'm out here. And that's why I stomp on X. Because <laughs> you are not going to get in my way to get back to my children. That's what I, I live by that. Like anybody. Nobody. No man. No woman. No, that's real. So at what point would you say you knew that the streets of Baltimore could get ugly? Um, when I was fighting for food. <laughs> when the guys on the block would tell my older sister, like, all right, it's time for her to be in her training. And I don't know where these girls, would, these women would come from, but for some reason they'd be, end up beefing with the nigga on the block and they would call me up like, it's your time to shine. <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> but I used to get like money. I would take money, you know, cause they would try to give you weed and phones. I didn't smoke, I was a child, you know what I mean? And I had so many phones from all the previous fights that I got paid for. I didn't need another church phone. I needed some money so I could get some food. So yeah, I was fighting for the money and then I would give like the weed or whatever else I got to my siblings. That's real. How would you detail your first time jumping off the porch? Um, what was it? Damn. Oh, it was this boy, Terrell. They, they was twins. The, uh, Terrell was the asshole. The other twin, I can't think of his name, but they used to call them rats. That's because that's what they look like, little rats. You know, so everybody used to call them rats. But that was like my jumping off the porch. Like he just kept picking with me. He kept picking with me. And he was a boy, you know what I mean? It, just, it was too much. And I beat his ass, but I pushed the desk into his stomach. That was, I had to get an advantage because he's a guy. You know, so, so I pushed the desk to his stomach and I just beat his face in. I'm like, you gotta beat his face because this boy can fight. Once he get up, he gonna beat your ass. <laughs> and then by the time he got up, he was dizzy. 
skinny, you know, and she <laughs> so, And then, then this girl, Lakia. Oh, I never it's crazy. That. You remember these people's names? Yeah, I remember. I remember everybody's names. The girl, Lakia, big girl. She was so tough, man. She was a bully. Like she just kept picking with me. I was in sixth grade. Yeah. And then this other boy named Larry. I fought him on the field. Because he just couldn't stand me being the only female on the field. I played football. And I used to, when I say, I'm really good at football. Like, really good. Like, when I see football games, I can't take it serious because I would play like none of them. I played good. <laughs> and they used to take the whole team. They used to be trying to, they used to be running into me. I would not fall. They would be like four people on my legs. I would drag them to the end. Like, every, but that's what I was known for, dragging the whole team. And this boy, he could not take that. And let me tell you, baby. He taught me a lesson that he was so much taller than me, but because I'm so competitive and such a fighter, I did not want to give up. And it took for my brother to get involved because he just kept getting in my face. <laughs> that was the only really challenge fight I had was this guy up. Yep. Because he was so much taller than me. He just, I kept running up to him and he just kept mop, 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 like using his length. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I just want to get to him. <laughs> and I did not get to him, but yeah. He ain't tried me no more because he knew, like, dad, this girl is strong. Like, you know what I mean? I didn't stop. It took my brother to, like, get involved. Like, you know, keep hitting my sister in the face. Right. So being that you were a girl growing up fighting guys and you had brothers, why did you still feel the need to still stand on your own against men? Because my brothers, it's, my mom has four boys and eight girls. My brother's really not fighters. They, they, they have it in them because we all have it in us. But... They're more so the lovers. It was like, it's more girls, so we were just more the, the you know, we was the lioness of the family. Like, so the boys didn't have to fight. Like, when it was guys beefing on the block with my brothers, I remember my sisters putting soap in the sock and, and you know, and putting big coats on and going around there to beat the guys up. Like, these was big street guys, dope boys, beating them guys because they fuck with my brother. Like, I don't know. It's just. And guys should, you know, it's so hard for men in this world, I think. It's more easier for a woman. It's hard for women, but it's kind of easier for a man. I mean, not easy, not easy for a man, so I just think that, yeah. I don't know, you watch Animal Planet? Yeah. If you look, you know, the, the females, the mm -hmm. lions, they go out and get the food. Yeah. They go out and go, you know, and go through all that. That's how it should be. So you grew up watching Animal Planet, like, yep, that's me. Yep. <laughs> Pretty that's much. crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> So when, looking back, when would you ultimately say you jumped off the porch full-fledged? I jumped off the porch as soon as I jumped out my mama. I don't know. I was eight pounds and nine ounces. I was a big butterball. <laughs> I just been, I don't know, eighth one of the world. I don't know, like, cause it's just like, I can say something and then somebody that knows me well from, you know, from out the womb to now, they'd be like, no, she jumped off the porch at this day. You know, so yeah. I just, yeah. From birth, you know what I mean? Like, so from your viewpoint, when would you say, looking back, like, yo, I'm really out here? Oh, like, um, when I first dropped my, I don't know, it's just so many things, I can't even. <laughs> I can imagine growing up in Baltimore, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Like I can say having my children, like, mm -hmm. You wouldn't even know. I don't know, it's just so many things. Um, really jumping off the porch is like overcoming like a lot of stuff. Like, yeah. cause the odds was against me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Odds oh, still against me. That's what you want to call them. But I don't know. Me just being myself, like just For keep sure. going. Like, cause my life was crazy and it didn't stop me. At what point would you say you got introduced to exotic dancing? Um, like what? When I was like 22? And I like started doing that when I had my sister and brother, my little sister and my little brother. What I made need, you choose dancing? I needed extra bag fast. And they was, they was in you know, sports. My brother played football and she was running track. That stuff is expensive. And then I have two children of my own. You know, was, I'm not ready to put all of that on my man. I'm already on my man, like, and I'm expensive. <laughs> so it was just like, you know, I gotta do something. So I went to the track. And I did not strip, because I've never been a stripper. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Shout out to my strippers. But I've always been an exotic dancer. Like, <laughs> I never had to strip. Like, just did a little one, two, and it's yeah. like, <laughs> on my feet. That's that. 
And they had the best cleats. They had the best everything. Best makeup, best every, best clothes, best shoes. When they was with me, they had the best everything. You wouldn't even know that I was working, you know, where I was working at. Yeah, it was lit. So what made you turn a new leap to leave the club? My music, like I really just, I was able to, actually they, they left. My sister went off to college and my little brother, he went and lived with my brother or somebody, I believe, um, my oldest brother. And I was able to focus on myself. Like I always wanted to be a singer, but I just never had the time to really focus on just me. Cause it always was me helping everybody else instead of myself. So once Dave is gone, it's like my children are me. So it's just like, you know, they, that ain't nothing. You know what I mean? So it was like, okay, now I can really focus on me. And it was once I started dropping my music, my very first song, That's Thinking About cool. You. Yeah. How did the public receive you singing? They went crazy. Yeah, it, my very first single got played on the radio the very first day it was out. Oh, that's and it, it got played on the radio and my page got hacked immediately. And then I had to stay in the house 24 hours, like reading, communicating back with Instagram so I can get it back. And then I got it back 24 hours. But when I got back on social media, had my page back, everybody was just, it went crazy. They were just telling me like, this is what happened while you were gone, da da da. But I just knew like, oh my gosh. This is where I need to be. Because mm -hmm. if you, you know, doing that, I didn't have the social media for so long. You know what I mean? Been going viral, eating watermelon, getting paid to eat watermelon, getting paid for foot pictures, all types of stuff. <laughs> and nobody cared. Yeah. As soon as I drop a song, they just try to snatch me away, try to mute me. I was like, okay, this is the route. Because it's a problem. Sure. And I like solving problems. That's what's <laughs> going on. So, what is green light music for the people who wouldn't know? Green light music is G. That's, that's, you know, G, Big G, it's my cousin. Um, it's a studio back over East Baltimore. We started at, um, on Harbor Street, right? I think it's right. Yeah, East Harbor, right? And then, yeah, we just went up. That's when we started at, like, I had up my guy Sin, of course, Big Sin. We all, it's like me, Sin, G. Yeah, Tasiki, Sin, G. Like, we in the studio, it's a problem. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the magic happened, green light. And I got a few other things. I had, like the song I eat, so I did that in um, I Love Your Studio. So they on the rise with me too. That's real. Yeah, they, they record my rap song. Like green light is where, you know, I, I would record a rap song at green light, but we didn't really care for rapping. We just was on my singing shit. So that's why I do all my R&B and stuff. So what made you switch it up? And you like, you know what? I can rap too and show the people that you can rap with I eat. That was your first rap song you put out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the negative shit I went through with my, my peoples, with, with Krishan and um, Natalie, it was like, it wasn't giving singing material. But I liked, like all my music come from like something negative or something that happened in my life and I like to change it to something positive. And when I say positive, it's like music. That's positive to me. So it's like, so especially what I sing, I don't know, you know, but so, I went through something crazy with them, and I was like, you know what, let me do a song. And it wasn't giving singing, it was giving rap, like rap. <laughs> so I was like, let me try to rap. So I hit up Sin, and we just went up in there and just put our brains together and came up with Ice. That's crazy. So let's talk about your time on reality TV. How did you discover that you would be a fan favorite or a personality amongst the public? Um, How did you discover, like, oh, you know what, I can get that a shot too? Would you say, you seen what your sister was doing, and then you feel like you can do it too, or did you feel like you always wanted to be a part of reality TV? Um, I've always wanted to be a part of it. Everybody wanted to be a bad girl. Like when I was little, I was running around the house saying, "I run LA," and I hadn't even been to LA. Like, so I already knew that's something I wanted to do, and and it's, that's up my alley, you know. But um, of course, my sister being in LA and being with the connections that she had in LA, she was on there. But it's only right, like, it was only right, like, to bring big sets along, like, are you crazy? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it was, it was, I think it was a good push for my career, my music career. Like, nowadays, being on a show or, you know, a big, a good, a good show or a good movie, that's what helps, like, what you're really pushing. If you got something going on now, if you want to just be an actor or just reality star, cool. But me, like, you know, I'm an artist and I had a lot of people listening to my music, but I just feel like I need to tap into more of the world, like just everybody. Like, 
And I did that by going on one of the biggest networks, Zeus Network. So yeah, That's that real. was my reason. I don't know I have a few reasons before. How did it make you feel once you allegedly found out that your sister was trying to deprive you of an opportunity? It hurt it bad. It, really, it hurts a lot. Um, it also just made me want to continue to be myself because me being myself, it, it opened so many doors. Like, that's what made, you know what I mean, the depriving come through, you know, because sometimes people can't handle a person just being themselves. And when you're just so lovable and, you know, and you're lovable, you, you're secure, you're stable, you, you, you're strong, it's sometimes it's, people can't take that. And it might be your mother, your sister, your brother, you know what I mean? But it sucks, it's unfortunate, but yeah, it hurt a lot, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Gemini. We, we get over shit. How would you describe your time on Zeus Network? You quickly became a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. Talk about your time on the show and what was your experience like? It was good. I just feel like it was a little shook up because me and my sister went on the show together and we, just, we had a plan. We talked, you know what I mean? We, we were killed and shit. And then to get on the show and know that, mind you, I already knew it was a little weird shit that she already had planned, but I just know sometimes like with my loving heart and then just my ways, period, it can change what you came with. Like you could probably come with like, oh, I'm, I'm ready to say this shit. You know, I'm ready to eat this girl up. And whole time, once you get around me, it's like, you're gonna have a change of heart. So I just thought that that's what, that was gonna happen, but it didn't. It was like, no, this is how this gonna go. Yeah, yeah, that shit was fucked up. Talk about the more sort of fucked up shit, like ambushing scenes. I'm pretty sure you didn't anticipate fighting your sister's friends, but of course we've seen it all unfold on reality TV. No, I mean, I wouldn't. They so little, you know I mean? They, they so <laughs> fragile. You know, like, I was never planning on fighting. Like, I could have knocked out Marge and Crazy in Love when she, when she stepping in a, a sibling conversation and she already was told to see her way out of it. Like, you know, like, I just, she was fragile, you know what I mean? I said what I said and she backed up and went on the rocks. Of course, they didn't show y'all that part, but we know what the fuck went on, you know, like. I only fought her because she, she wanted to, she literally already hit me without saying, without hit me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, lifting your nostril and then telling me two times to get down from there. Since the first time I didn't get it. Like, hey, get down from there. Cause I was standing on the chair, on the sprinter, trying to let my sister by. And she was like, hey, get down from there, Tifa. So I'm like, no, I'm just letting Krishan get by. So she said she wanted to get off the sprinter. And she was like, no, get down from there. When she left that nostril, I could smell, like I told you, I'm a lion. Like, I could smell it, like, what? Yeah, that was a, what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Get down from it. Okay, I'm going to punch down from it. Who the fuck is you talking to? Because what I'm not ready to do is get, you're not going to hit me first. You're not. I can smell it. And I hate when people ask, like, oh, I didn't even know. I didn't know you knew. You can smell it. And if you, you could smell it, you don't need to be in those places, baby, because, yeah, I just felt it. It was like, it was go time. And it made so much sense of why she never walked by. She told me she was ready to get off the sprinter. She was, I'm ready to get off the sprinter. I was like, okay. So I stood up on the chair and I was like, go ahead and walk by because it's a little bit of space, you know, between the door and the, you know, the walkway. And then she was just looking up and then she's like, oh, I'm like, you okay? You know what I mean? And, her friend had yolk in her hair, Marge had yolk. I'm like, they still throwing eggs at y'all? They was throwing eggs before we went in the club. You performed, we had a good time on stage, and y'all get off the stage and come out and they still throwing eggs at y'all? I was pissed, so my big sister instincts kicked right in, you know what I mean? So, I'm like, let me off this sprinter. Who the fuck is out there still throwing eggs? I'm ready to go off. But when I said that, that's when Marge was like, Tifa, get down from there, because Marge was basically trying to tell me, like, damn, this bitch still don't get it. We here to fight you. And you still try to be Captain Save You know what I mean? Because she had to say it to me twice. I did not get it. Because I heard Krishan saying, hey, I want to get off the sprinter. I'm ready to go. Cause she wasn't supposed to be on my sprinter anyway. You know what I mean? So she had her own car that she was with, you know, her team with. So when I was letting her off, the whole time it was, you no, know, she wanted me to stand right there, me be in the middle, because if you get on the sprinter, she's right here, Marge is right here, and Jay is right here. The other one else punched me on the head. So, in the beginning, I was right here. I was where they wanted me to be. But once I stood up on that chair to let her get by, you know what I mean? Now it's like, so say for this is the walk space. I'm taller than all of them now. I have an advantage over there. And she knew that. That's why she was like, Tifa, get down from me. You get what? Yeah. 
So that's what unfolded to you fighting the two friends in the field. Yeah, it was literally, yeah, that's what it went to. And, and if, if she wasn't pregnant, honestly, she would have got fought too. Cause she, it was both, it was all three of them. It was all three of them. It was uh, Smiley too, I seen it. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. Yeah, it was like a, let's have a joy ride on this girl head. But you definitely made your mark and you definitely let it be known that you're not to be fucked with. Mm-hmm. Let me I mean, teach but you that shorty. was already known. I just think it was, it's still, it's still fucked up that you used me for whatever. Cause it was known before not to be fucked with. So I just feel like you just like, let's just get this camera and get this time. Let's go. Like what? No, it was definitely a moment. Let me teach you shorty. Yeah. Did you ever think that phrase would be like, now it's like a thing now. Everybody running with it. You feel me? Like, no, because I don't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even be saying that when I fight. I just, see, I was literally talking to her, like trying to guide her. I didn't, mind you, she's like, she was a little sister to oh, me. Oh, you was really trying to show her what's up? Yeah, I was just Damn. trying to guide her because she was like a little sister to me. Be, you know, and then mind you, if y'all going to be out here jumping people, jumping monsters, jumping hawks like myself, you feel me? You got to know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's no way I should have popped off that sprinter or the door when the doors open saying, Yeah, give me destiny, da da da. Like I was too and my face was not even touched. It's no way. It's four of y'all in my head, three of y'all, two of y'all. Like it, come on now. It's crazy. You understand what I'm saying? So I my I really was talking like, let me teach you. Because it's no way I should be here sixteen hours later about to break your fucking face. It's no way. And y'all just was jumping me. And y'all supposed to be the biggest badasses on the internet. No way. No, I feel that. So did, that's where that came from. I don't even say that when I fight. Like, my thing when I fight is bitch, bitch. I had, I had a problem of every time I punch land, bitch. That was my issue. But now I, I worked on it. I don't do that anymore. I don't say that anymore. But, um, yeah, so I don't even say that. That was just me literally talking to her. I was like, let me teach you, shorty, because y'all know what the fuck y'all was doing last <laughs> night. You thought I wasn't going to find you. You thought that. Like, yeah, it was that type of how would you describe your experience with the other girls on the show? It was great. I, I feel like, honestly, I feel like it was, it was, it was real good. But I just feel like it would have just been more genuine. I would have just felt people energy way more, in that true energy. Not saying that nobody was giving me real energy, because house beat, those are my babies. But I'm just saying, like, when me being seen in that, you know, predicament, it kind of, you know, it can make people feel uncomfortable. It can make you feel like, dang, what if she go off on me? I didn't want to have that thought in nobody here. I just wanted to be like how, you, how I met you, you know what I'm saying? Like, just a, a nice meet, like not a, damn, she ain't to be fucked with. So is it like, if, yeah. you're, giving, if, you're, giving, if you're giving me this, this brush because you seen me fight last night, you know what I mean? Is it, you know what I mean? I want people to be they self. So it was like, I didn't even really know, you know what I'm saying? Because I have, I do have a, a history of a lot of people being scared of me. I could care less about you being scared of me. I'm not God. Don't fear me. You feel me? Yeah. So that's what it was. It was like, dang, is this all genuine or is this because they feel sorry for me because I got jumped? Or is it because they like, oh, this girl eats? Or, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was good. But I just feel like the fight just kind of messed up a lot of natural shit. Yeah. If you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. You felt like they befriended you because they didn't want to become the next victim. Not even befriending me, not even that. I mean, some, okay, so boom. The girls that was, knew that they was against me and didn't fuck with me, yes. For the, those ones, yes. But the women that, like, they fell for me. It was, a, you know, it was an emotional situation. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, especially to be there to see it, it'll make you want to comfort this person. You know what I mean? And I didn't really want that. I don't know, but I just wanted us to just get to know each other. Us, you know what I mean? And it was times where people wanted to talk about it and it get me emotional. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, damn, that never would happen. Mm. But Mariah Lynn came through trim. She did. She did. Way to quit her. <laughs> I paid her back, though. Yeah, I paid her back. Y'all got to wait to see that on Baddies, Baddies versus Fire. It's fire. You had her back, too. Mm-hmm. Real spill. <laughs> <laughs> she was bad. She was like, now I see how it feel for when somebody jumps into your fight. <laughs> <laughs> She liked it. I was like, okay, good. For sure. How unexpected of that friendship did you think, you know what I'm saying, y'all would be cool, you know what I'm saying? Because she just came through out the blue. I don't think nobody expected her to have your back, but she just did, you know? Yeah, but me and Mariah was already cool. Like, my friend Paris, we have a, um, a friend in common. So my friend Paris was her best friend. He introduced us. 
it, this was be for the show. So when we knew that we was, you know, going to be the ones on the show, we already was locked, you know, like locked in, you know, really locked in, like far as yeah. not just meeting each other, but like, yeah, since we already know each other, we might as well have each other back. You know, right. we already got our alliances going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, she, and she, the person that introduced her, that's my baby, so it was all good. So once yeah. I got there, I just was mad we wasn't in the same house. Because a lot of things was misunderstood, you know what I mean? Like, but it's cool. That's my book. What's your thoughts and opinions about the bullying comments that's being said about this season of the show? Um, I'm gonna call it bullying because we're grown. You know what I mean? But I get what they're saying. It's gotta be another. It gotta be a, an adult term for bully. Is it? I don't think it is. A bully. What a bully. aggressor. <laughs> Aggr I like I like aggressive. I, I like aggressive. aggressive. Like you know, there's a lot of aggressors. Like and then it's equalizers. You know, equalizers are people like myself, people that actually can fight and handle the situation. <laughs> aggressors are people that's just so aggressive. You're the one that started it. You know what I mean? Most likely you can't finish it. Mm -hmm. You was aggressive from the beginning. You know, so we're gonna call them aggressors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the people eating them up. Like that shit. I told them when it was happening. Like this ain't gonna look too good. I'm telling you, y'all got a real motherfucker on the show. So a lot of real motherfuckers is rapey, Tim Dan. And, and yeah, they gonna eat y'all up. And that's what they did. So you told them while filming was going on, like, hey, yo, your perception ain't gonna be what it's gonna be on camera. Then they ain't listening. Mm-mm. Excuse me. <laughs> they ain't listen. Mm. So you wasn't for the bullying, really, honest to say. Mm-mm. Say it. Mm. <laughs> I mean, see, growing up, like all the kids and the people I used to get bullied, I would get them and I would put them under my wing. They would hang on me. And then people weren't bullying. Like, so I've never been. Mm -mm. Like, you, you're the littlest one, everybody ready to pick on you. Oh, you ready to be with me. Even if you was a guy, they'd be like, what the kid is, how the kid this girl protect me? I got family. I got goons, baby. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> So you're good, you know. So I would just put them under my wing, girls or guys. Like it didn't matter. If they was getting bullied, then yeah, you hanging with me, cause ain't nobody gonna do that while we together. So what's your thoughts and opinions about the smiley situation, where everybody feels like she's the one being picked on? Smiley not being picked on. No. See, that's just you know, just I guess to make you ask me that question. You know what I mean? That's what that's for. Just that's what you guys got to see. It was just because they knew they knew that hey, people are gonna be asking them, hey, why are everybody picking on her? It seems like everybody, no, nobody's picking on that girl. Mm -mm. Smiley talk, big shit. That was my homegirl. Once I started feeling her out, I was like, oh no, you ain't my cup of tea. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She has sweet things about her. You know what I'm saying? She does. I'll give her that. She has sweet things about her, but a liar and a manipulator will throw that all out the door. Did you see how petition, petition yeah. about people petition trying to get Roly off the show? Yes, I think that's crazy. I don't know. It's wild. I mean, they they got their reasons why. Mm, I don't know. They. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm just saying, like, because it's looking like. If they keep her, it probably can mess the money up, but it's also looking like it's, it's, it's making the money go. Because a lot of people that don't even know what Roly is the problem, how she's the problem, they ready to go tune in and see why y'all signing this petition. Why y'all spending all this time and day to sign for this girl that's been on your screen that's very for true. years. I mean, I'm, I'm a Gemini. I think of all of it. Right. You know, I'm, I don't know. That's how I'm thinking about it. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of time on your hand. To be doing that. Cause, nah, for real. Uh, so what's your thoughts and opinions about the internet allegations with Scarface? I don't know. What you mean? Like, Just a whole lot of, you know, internet cackles, I would say, you know? Yeah, like calling her what, her name and stuff? I don't even know how what to you explain it, sir. What, they said ABT and, I mean, she called people her name. She called me out my name. like. She's not a walking food stamp card, but I mean, I guess people 
Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not a child molester, but they out here calling me molesky, so I don't fucking know. You get what you get. You get what you give. I don't fuck, I don't know. I'm giving out ass whooping, so I'm giving out beauty. I'm giving out hits. They got to come with a lot, baby. <laughs> I don't know. So that's how I would carry it if I was her. That girl, I don't know, because we was cool before we left. We even ate like a burger, I think it was chicken sandwich or something, at the airport together. Before, like once the show was over, we all had to go back home. So I don't know where this shit is coming from. But I love to get the people what they want. How do you feel about those allegations being thrown at you when you, do you want to address that? Um, it hurt, but at the same time, when you know something isn't true, it really can't phase you. You know what I mean? You're still gonna get up and move the same way you move. You know what I mean? Like, cause I'm that girl. I just, that's what I think. Like, I'm going up and it's like, all these people love me. How can we make them hate her? You gotta come with a lie. You know what I mean? Cause the truth hurt, obviously like, I'm the truth. It's just so you have to lie on me to make someone hate me. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, it's fucked up because now it's, Everybody want to apologize to me. Everybody want to, uh, I didn't mean to do, no. You got to stand on it and stay over there. Because if I made you mad from just getting on the TV screen and now I'm all of these things, these nasty things, it scares me. I, it, and I, yeah, I I'm really, I have a lot of fear to see like, because I'm going to keep going up. I'm going to keep getting these blessings. So I have fear that you're going to come up with something more drastic. At, you know what I mean? Like, I just can't. From this little bit of shine that I'm getting, because I'm just starting. And you come up with that, you go to the lowest of the lowest. I'm really that girl. Really that girl? I'm really that girl. But, and it, it, but also, it sucks. And what really hurts me is because it's people out here that's been through that, that's going through that as I speak. And it takes from their story. It takes from their truth. Because you got somebody like me that's been lied on. So now I'm that person that's like, is it true? You know, if someone was to tell me this happened to me, this, that, that, it's gonna make me question it. Cause I'm like, dang, what happened with you and that person? I want to ask those questions now mm -hmm. because I know what's going on over here. I know about myself and I know what happened to me. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, it's messed up because it make you question what really is going on out here. You know what I mean? It's, nah, for sure. It make you take it lightly. No, nah, I feel that. I got to ask you though, so what is a meatball? A meatball is just something you don't want to be. Like, you know, when you had a cookout, like that'd be like the last thing you eat for real off the plate. You might eat that first <laughs> one, eat meatball. Once you, you put like a bunch of things on your plate at the cookout, that'd be the thing rolling around. You got to put that on your plate last because if you put the meatballs on your plate, it's just going to be everywhere, just all over the place, just messing up the fucking plate, just doing the most. You just, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just messy. You just, you just don't want to be a meatball. Where'd the lingo come from? That's your word? No, it comes from Tasha from Baltimore. <laughs> from Baltimore. It comes from Tasha. She's that girl. She's funny. Her and, um, what's that other girl name? Tasha and Tiny. Yeah, they be having these battles, fighting and, and dancing and stuff. Mm. And she, yeah, she was like, she said that one day. She was like, it was like, what you think about Tiny? What you got to say about this? She said, fucking meatball. <laughs> and it just stuck with me. I'm like, yes, I don't even know what the fuck that means. She's a fucking meatball. <laughs> like, so yeah, that's where that came from. Nah, for real. So in conclusion, how would you describe your time with Zeus as a whole? Will we see more of you? Yes, you will see more of me, obviously, because I love that, you know, I'm that girl and I keep being that girl. <laughs> So you actually will see more of me on Zeus. Mm -hmm. When they call me, I'll be like, what's up? What we talking? <laughs> what them numbers like? And they always talking them numbers. Zeus takes care of their people. And yeah. That's what's going we on. We on the flight and we, we going outside. Can't give us no little hint about what's going on next season or what? I see, I don't know. Only thing I can tell you is what they told you. Like it's the Caribbean. They're not going to be in the United States. We out of the country. Hopping, island hopping, you know what I mean? Versus, you know, the city hopping, we're gonna be island hopping. I mean, I'm, not we, I don't even know if I'm gonna be on this. I don't know. I'm just gonna <laughs> you know, manifesting. But, um, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a lot of shit. I think it's gonna be a lot of tea, like fights. 
again, I, get, I, I just hope we can really, not we, they or whoever, if it is we, get the bag, mm. you know, get to the bag for real. Because do y'all really be getting to a bag? Because you know they say y'all don't, bro. Like I gotta know. Like, do y'all really be getting money? What's up? See, I be really getting money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about them because it's crazy. See, I be really getting money. That's why I fight the way I do. I look like I get money when I fight. You feel me? No bad. I, I look like I got a lot to lose. You feel me? For sure. Those bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I don't know, baby. I don't know. We got a lot of stuff coming, though. Some fighting classes. You really going to teach them? Yes. Oh, for sure. I'm going to go on tour. Did y'all grow up professionally boxing, though? Because a lot of people think y'all, like, grew up, like, you know what I'm saying? Taekwondo some shit. Like, y'all really. No, we from Baltimore. So it's like, in Baltimore, when you're nice looking and you. Yeah, it's, the, it's when you nice look. I don't know because we didn't we ha, we didn't have the flies clothes, so I don't know what it was like. But we always had our faces, you know what I mean, our bodies. So that's what it was. They pick with you. It's like we had to fight. We had, you had to defend yourself. So that's where that shit come from. But nobody was in no boxing classes. Like when the officers would watch the fights. Like I know officers watching my fight. One, the two officers walk my walk me in the house one day and talk to my mom. And they was giving me my charges because I got, you know, charges pressed on me. But they also was trying to tell my mom, like, hey, you should sign her hands up. You should sign her up. She's, she's a good fighter. She, she <laughs> could be a pro fighter. So my mom, like, yeah, let me read the papers. They had everything ready. She ready. I'm, no. And then the other officer was, was the black guy. He was like, hey, man. He pulled my mother over. He was like, you sign her hands over? I'm sure y'all going to be living in this neighborhood still. She going to get into a fight. And then she going to be in way bigger trouble than this just citation like that I'm about to give y'all. So he was like, just wait. That's what he told my mom. And then I told my mom, I said, mom, don't do it. Because I know I'm ready to fight such and such next week. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't sign up. But I did want to do boxing because I was so good at it. And always, people used to always ask me after my fights, like, who do you think can beat you? Because your hands is crazy. And I used to be like, I don't think nobody can beat me, but I think my, what's her name, Layla Ali? I always say Layla Ali can give me a run for my money. I was saying this as a kid, and she was already an adult. I was, you know what I mean? So I was saying as a kid, like when people, and these was people that could really fight that was asking me these questions. And I was like, yeah, I think Layla Ali would give me a run for my money. And they just all would laugh. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Throughout all this though, I think the best thing about it is that you are happily married. Yeah. How does that make you feel to know that you are a wife at the end of the day? I'm that girl. Right. <laughs> Duh, like. I mean, I'm lovable. Uh, it feels good. It, it's also like, it's really good because, you know, God didn't make men and women for us to be alone. Or just, you know what I mean, period. whoever your love is. He didn't make us humans over here to be alone. So it feels good to not be alone. You know what I'm saying? I might be, people might look at me and be like, dang, she alone in this shit. She's stomping and jumping off these porches by herself. But I'm really not. Because at the end of the day, after I jump off the porch, I have my loved one to go right to, like, and that feels good. That's why I'm so, that's another reason why I'm on already all the time. How does it make you feel to know that you got a strong support system like that? It feels good. It, it just, like I said, it just, it's that extra armor, you know what I mean, that every human I feel like deserves and needs. That's real. What's some advice you would give girls that's watching this or just watching you, period? Um, no matter what comes your way, I mean, no matter what, girl, they saying the worst things about me today. Don't stop. It's such an easy thing to say, but just don't stop. Because I could have stopped so many times, and I didn't. I was like, fuck that. I still got this going on. I still got to be over here. I still got to be a jump off the porch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I was like, fuck that. You know what I mean? Fuck that shit. Real you know what I mean? And keep it pushing. Keep it moving. Don't let nothing stop you. Haters should not be able to stop your faith. Real spill. So what's next for you, sir? More music. Me and Biggie got some shit coming out that's about to really shake the world. Like, you and Biggie got some music? Shake the porch. <laughs> yes. We got some fire coming. Um, I just dropped my song, Bad Bad, bad, bad Bitch. bitch. Yeah. You already. Yeah. It's fire. It's eating the people up. I'm getting about 15,000 views a day. <laughs> no label, no card on my YouTube either. <laughs> Just all organic, you know, Real just spirit. running them up respectfully. Um, when the project coming? 
That's the thing. I have project material. I don't know. I'm just, I like to give the people what they want. They, they start asking for it, asking, asking for it. Like how they ask me to be on baddies. Like how they asking me to beat that girl up. I need them to put that same energy and pressure into me giving them a project. And I'll give it to them because I have project material ready to go right now. Real still. So I'm just waiting for the people to. You're just waiting on them. Yep. We it's their show. Really? I'm just an entertainer. <laughs> Any last words and shout outs? Um, no. Shout out to my mama, my papa, the Lord, my grandma, you know what I'm saying? My baby girl. I'm, yeah. And shout out to my team. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, without my team, there is no Tasiki. Okay? That's it. Real still, Tasiki, we appreciate having you on the porch with us today, sir. Of course. And big shout out to Off the Porch because I've been wanting to be here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> In your city, talking cash shit. Popping bottles with some model, seeking mad.